so good morning sir how are you i'm very well tanveen and i hope you are also coping well with the change of weather yeah sir just going on with the change of weather and adjusting with the new environment so you are very much welcome for, uh, with the round of conversation with the authors and viewers today we are having in front of us author rajesh talwar and we are going to discuss about his latest book hope this is visible how i became a taliban assassin and the murder that wasn't so this is very strong very you know such a topic it is very heavy topic so before hopping on to the topic discussing what is the title what is the cover all about and how your experience was throughout this as a life as, as an author so please introduce yourself sir to the viewers uh thank you tanmeen uh well i have been writing now for very many years uh and uh, but the latest book is related to my time with the un because in the beginning i started off as a lawyer working in the courts in lady delhi uh, and then i had an opportunity to go to the uk on a british evening scholarship many years ago which i went for and uh, soon after that the united nations offered me a job in kosovo oh. and although i enjoyed my practice here it was a bit you know routine and boring and i always like to see new countries so i accepted and uh, then for the next the united nations in different parts of the world uh, maybe 20 30 countries in asia europe africa and i had two postings in afghanistan uh for different periods of time so it's a place i'm very familiar with and as you know the great experiment which was conducted in afghanistan went wrong the taliban came back to power yes i thought i would write a fiction which would explain indirectly one of the important reasons why this happened correct and that gave rise to the first rather serious novella how i became a taliban assassin as far as the second novella is concerned i was a lawyer before i joined the un mm -hmm. and that is also related to a very famous case the rajesh talwar case my name sex case is not based on that case but it is inspired by that case and uh, the police they messed up the investigation the talwars were clearly innocent i in fact wrote another non fiction book on their innocence and uh, this second novella is inspired from that story oh that's really you know like i must say very heavy topic chosen and that too from all your inspiration you have collected that topic and writing it and you know bringing it front of the readers that is really a tough and difficult job so how was your journey writing your uh, the taliban assassin book because as such you have written more than 29 books children books plays self help books non fiction books but this topic is somewhat different and the genre is also different from all the other books so how was your experience writing this book well i think uh, you know one of the things that went wrong with the ex experiment in afghanistan was that of course it was a war zone uh, but there were a lot of accidental deaths caused uh, in afghanistan you had the american and nato war planes flying to attack the taliban correct but sometimes they mistook innocent civilians to be the taliban quite often this happened when the civilians were having a celebration so in afghanistan if they have a wedding during the course of the wedding they will fire celebratory gunfire you know just that okay somebody's got married fire 10 shots into the air it's a very macho culture and i think this used to happen in punjab as well pre partition i hear that you know and even now maybe in some villages uh, tanmeen may be knowing 
Uh, they might just, you know, fire off a few bullets. And uh, it is just part of the festivity. But aircraft flowing, uh, flying overhead, they have time and again mistaken this, that, okay, this must be the Taliban who are practicing gunfire. And uh, so they drop a bomb. A few hundred innocent people die. Yes. And Afghanistan is a, is a very tri tribal society. Everybody has 10, 12 children, you know. So mm. everybody is connected. Uh, so if 100 people die, that means 10,000 families are affected. The tribe is affected. And okay. this creates a great, you know, hostility towards the people who have actually come to help. Agreed, totally agreed that because the things which had happened recently in Taliban, in Kabul, you know, many people had suffered a lot, you know, like uh, without any information, the firing was given and many people died. Many people have uh, lost their loved ones. They have shifted from that place and came to India. It was really a tough time, I must say that, you know, like for the normal Indians, it has become tough to go and live in a different country. But others, those who are living in different countries, they can come to India and they can settle down anytime. So that is what happening between the two governments. I must say, like, we are none, we cannot do anything. We are not the government, but we can just discuss on this. Like, you know, like our government is so uh, simple. They don't even put on all the pressures on the immigrants or any people, those who are coming from outside India. But whenever we go, we settle down, uh, suppose in Taliban, in America, there are so many sir, restrictions, so many things, completing from visa, completing from your immigrant thing, uh, going to the embassy and many things. So like as a legal advisor, sir, what do you think on this issue? Like, Why is it happening? Why these things happen to only Indians? Well, uh, you know, Tarbin, uh, but... Uh... Uh, just to, to mention a little more uh, about the first novella, and then I'll come to your question. And that is that uh, the central character, Shamsher Khan, yes. he is completely against the Taliban. That's because true. the Taliban is a very vicious, very cruel regime. Yes. They don't have any consideration for the women. They abuse the women. The women, so many uh, female colleagues of mine, uh, who were working in Afghanistan, now they are out of jobs because the Taliban doesn't allow them to walk alone. They cannot go alone to the office. They, uh, the whole situation has changed. And this could so easily have been a successful experiment if they had been cautioned that these kind of incidents don't take place where the people who have come for good reasons uh, so it's real tragedy that the Taliban has once again come to power. And I think uh, to your other question that why in India we haven't taken care. Uh, you're very right. I think, for example, you know, there is uh, one thing that you are too soft a state. Yes. If you are a soft state, then the enemies will think that you're weak. Uh, the other thing is that you don't want to pick a fight unnecessarily. So it's just about being living in a neighborhood. You respect your neighbors, their neighbors respect you, everything is good. But if the neighbors disrespect you, for example, if I have a daughter and the neighbor's son disrespects her, then I cannot keep quiet. I have to protect my family. I cannot be... So we had these incidents in the past where Pakistanis came to Mumbai, the terrorists, and they started slaughtering innocent people. And India remained quiet. We just objected. We didn't give a robust response. So, uh, uh, you know, you have to uh, maintain your dignity. You have to show your strength when needed. I don't say that you pick a fight unnecessarily. So there's no need to go and pick a fight with your neighbor <laughs> over some small issue. Uh, but uh, uh, so we don't need to be hostile towards Pakistan. But if Pakistan does something, if our enemies do anything, we have to stand our ground and say, listen, this will not be accepted. Yes, 
that's totally correct and you know i agree with that question but as you know it goes on goes on goes on such things happen again and again it never stops so question always arises that will it be today or will it be tomorrow the start of our new life uh well for me i actually look uh, at you and i'm encouraged because i see that the younger generation actually has a lot of spirit uh, they have a lot of intelligence they make up their own mind and uh, uh, in fact as an influencer uh, you have a great responsibility than me because quite often and for valid reasons people don't listen to the media and they are influenced by influencers like yourself of yeah. course there's a flip side that they are influencers who are spreading disinformation unfortunately yeah. but uh, but hopefully uh, more power to people like you more power to the people who are uh, raising awareness raising consciousness spreading good messages of friendship of uh, love those kind of things so so i think uh, you may not realize your own power uh, but uh, what and what you are doing is good you know you have potential uh, to make a difference and uh, Uh, so for the future i think uh, i'm very hopeful of the younger generation <laughs> yes that is because you know uh, automatically it comes out and imbibes from within that we need to be strong from within ourselves and we need to take care of ourselves it's not about what environment or what group we are living in we should be strong enough to face each and every situation absolutely and actually you know there also i think we had different kind of stresses uh, and my parents had different kind of stresses uh, but today's generation also have their own stresses so uh, the online thing also they need to take a break from it from time to time because otherwise life is becoming too online <laughs> and uh, at night you go and see who messaged me you you pick up your phone first thing in the morning so 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 we need to take a bit of distance from technology as well that's true that's totally true because unless and until we are watching our phone or watching our messages within 2 hours within an hour we cannot resist out of that that uh, any message might have come so in every 2 hours we need that phone <laughs> so even if it is lost somewhere we'll search where was it and where is it kept so that is the need of the hour i think it is which is going on <laughs> yes and i think uh, but it's very useful also for example uh, in my second book uh, the first book uh, on the taliban the first novella that because i was based in afghanistan i had all the information based on my life experience but for the second book uh, the murder that wasn't although i have a similar name uh, i was overseas for a lot of the time when this case was going on uh but a uh, mobile phone is a great instrument of research yes plus i had my you know uh, background as a lawyer and so uh i could meet the challenge of writing uh, something uh which would uh raise awareness on the issue of how our courts are functioning how they need to work better uh those kind of things that's exactly true sir but as you said that you were in taliban you were been posted to afghanistan so have you seen all these things happening in front of you uh unfortunately yes uh how was that feeling like how could you have controlled yourself and how was that feeling i know you have poured all your emotions writing things in the book the grudges which you might be having you have removed in writing in your stories because as a human we cannot do anything our hands are all tied up because it's all about the government so what was your experience well you know uh, i have been working in a part of the un which is called department of peacekeeping operations okay. and so these people who work there staff members they are posted to war zones hmm. so we are you can say civil servants but we are in war zones so i have been in liberia which and seen ch- child soldiers you know 8 10 year olds carrying guns 
and I've been in East Timur, I've been in Somalia, where you have the pirates, Correct. and then I've been in Afghanistan, where, of course, this, uh, the terrible Taliban has been uh, causing uh, so much cruelty to people living there, ordinary people living there. So over time, uh, you, because you know that you are there for a good cause, mm. uh, you are, uh, so it's very much like a doctor, I suppose, that the doctor, I know my, my niece who is in medical college, the first time she had to peel somebody's skin, she fainted because <laughs> I can also understand, you know, because so if you, if you become a doctor the first time, uh, it's ter terrifying and you think, am I really being, going to be able to do this? Yeah. But uh, because it's for a good, good cause, you're going to cut somebody open not to kill him, yeah. but to uh, repair his body. Uh, then you overcome, you give yourself strength. Yes. And I think, uh, so the same thing is there that uh, in Afghanistan, seeing the brutality, uh, because these people, these terrorists, you know, like the Taliban were pretty much basically terrorists, uh, like the Islamic State. They are also have their own agendas. So okay. if you have, in India, you may have so many wells must be dug in a month in Rajasthan. They will have their agenda. So many bomb blasts should take place. Yeah. Here, we will have the agenda that, okay, let's dig all these wells and take videos to show the wells which we have. There, they will take videos of the bomb blasts because they are getting funds from terror financing entities, which yeah. may be in Pakistan, may be in Saudi Arabia. So they also, you know, do it like a very cruel business. Uh, but, uh, but I think uh, I enjoyed my time with the UN. And uh, of course, the UN is also considerate to their staff. So because of the stress with, under which we live in these war zones, they give us frequent breaks. So they say after every eight weeks or two months, they say, okay, now it's time for you to take a holiday. Because uh, if you stay here, uh, you will be too stressed out. So yeah. many times uh, my boss would say, oh, Rajesh, now you have to go. And you've been here too long. Uh, the work will continue, but you need to take a break, go on a holiday for, to Maldives or to Thailand or back home. And uh, so, so those are the benefits. There's a plus and minus uh, of, of working in such situations. Yes, agreed. Totally agreed with that. So you might be having a great time in Maldives or somewhere. <laughs> Yes, so you, you have a great time in Maldives and then you take a flight back and, they, and then you have to come out of the airport and wear a bulletproof vest oh. and yes, and get into a bulletproof car. But the break in the Maldives, the sunsets which you see or, uh, you know, the, uh, the excellent sushi which you have in Japan. Uh, oh. so, uh, so those... Those holidays, uh, they enrich your life and your work also enriches your life. True. So uh, maybe you have to go to the opposite. You know, the people in the hill stations, they get bored seeing the hills and they say, oh, we want to go to Chandni Chowk and do the shopping. <laughs> and the people in Chandni Chowk, they say, oh, it's so crowded, too noisy. We want to go to the hills. Yes. So just have a bit of taste of both. That's true. That's exactly true. Because whatever a person is having, they are never ever satisfied with that. That is what we are as a human being. We are never ever satisfied with what we have and what we are around it. True, 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 true. So, I think sir, that's a... Yes. So, sir, you have no, written how I became a Taliban assassin and the murder that was in two novellas combined in one book. So, how, why did you thought of making these two novellas into one, a thriller, a suspense, a romance, combining together and writing it? Well, actually, their themes were very similar because in the first novella, innocent people die yes. uh, because of a mistake by the pilot who thinks that these are Taliban, but he bombs innocent people, guests at a wedding. Oh. In the second, 
in the second novella also innocent people die uh in the so there uh, there is a in the first novella there is a state where there is no law and justice at all because afghanistan there is no law and justice okay. the second novella we have law and justice but it is not working very well cases are taking too long mm. now look at mr sidhu's case mm. i don't i don't defend him or i don't uh this uh, you know i think everybody what he did maybe he needs to be punished but i think it was 25 years ago or 30 years ago our cases take so long uh, right. people say that cases the cases are filed by one generation and the verdicts are received by the next that's so you and so that's uh, that's not you know we are moving into becoming a global uh, superpower uh, we have to we have to improve our justice delivery system so the while the first novella talks about why we failed in afghanistan the second novella encourages the government encourages everybody we need to improve our court system we need to have better policing we need to have better investigation better judges we need everything much faster it can't be uh, sanjay das case goes for 10 years Siddhu's case goes for 20 years. Nirbhaya case goes on for 15 years. You know those things; they have to be decided speedily. So now this new case, this terrible, uh, you know, uh, crime in New Delhi about the which the where the girl was strangled and body was cut up. Yes. This case is going to go on for 10 years. That's true. That's That not acceptable uh, because the the family of the victims they don't. they cannot sleep until the accused person is sentenced until they see that there has been some justice that's and uh, uh, and we have the power you know the problem is that the politicians uh, they all think that if we show a bridge people will say oh he's made a bridge let's make uh, let's give him our vote but if they invest in the justice system uh, by appointing more judges by improving the buildings people don't see it it does not translate immediately into votes correct so uh, but we need uh, we need to have a justice good justice machinery that's really true because it seems that this all things are really going to take time which didn't happen since generations how it will bring a change immediately because like you said about sanjay dutt case siddhu's case nirbhaya case the recent case which we are discussing of everything is taking time everything because you know like government is not taking a strict action and what the accused family can do they can just go and come go and come living their whole personal routine living their life all things keeping aside they cannot just go in the court and sit for hours that is not the life left for them but these things will take some time i don't know when that some time will come because it's been years 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 we are listening that things will change things will change it's still not changing so that is what it is so like you said sir that it's the book which you have written it's all based on your inspiration when you were in afghanistan when you were in taliban so are these cases and are the story which you have written in the book is all fictional or all the real things which you have seen well they are inspired from both actually this is one more thing the two books have in common that yes. they are both inspired from real life correct so there's so it's very true there were incidents where innocent people were killed even during barack obama's time they increased the number of drones you know and then drones there's somebody sitting in california he is looking at the ground and he presses the button and people die That's so uh these things happened innocents died and of course family members of those innocents some of them who may have hated the taliban then they thought well the taliban is bad but they at least did not destroy our family so uh, uh, it's definitely based on real life and also the second novella the murder that wasn't that is also based on one real life case because the police there they said if it was not the parents who else it could have been so one of the things which my 
novella shows is that there could have been somebody else. Uh, so uh, the the expert evidence which came, it was just nonsensical. Uh, they the quality was so poor. Uh, they did not even take proper fingerprints. They did. They were you know the forensics. Everything was really. Uh, abysmal. So we need to improve a lot and we can improve, but we need to give it priority. And Let's if see. we have, uh, if, we, if we give it priority, there will be rich rewards because even companies will come, they will say in India, you get just this very fast. If you have to pay tax, uh, if the tax is illegal, in one year you will come to know and you will get relief. Uh, so, so the outside world will also feel that rule of law, law and order, justice is good in India. That will improve our reputation across the world. Now we have become the president of the G20 yes. this year. And I was just talking to a friend of mine. I said, now it's very good that at least the pollution in Delhi will improve. <laughs> I said, how will it improve? I said, you know, uh, there will be at least 30, 40 events this year okay. concerning the G20 because India is now the president. All the events will be in India. There is a possibility that next November, because G20 finished this November, next November, the G20 summit will take place in New Delhi. Now, for the past 10 years, people have been fighting. Kejriwal and BJP have been fighting. Congress have been fighting why the pollution problem in Delhi is not being solved. Right. I said, now the government will realize heads of states are going to come in November. In November, every year, the killings in November start. Yes. That killings in the sense that people have air pollution related deaths. Yes. But now we are going to have heads of states coming to India next year in November. If Delhi becomes a gas chamber, what kind of image will they get of our country? And the government also knows this. So I'm hoping, I said, well, it's very good. I don't know what the G20 will achieve, but at least the pollution in our city, uh, cities will be hopefully improved. You know, for the sake of impressing the government, uh, what all people can do that we also know. We know that uh, suppose anyone, uh, we say uh, Sri Narendra Modi uh, is coming in our state. What government will start doing of that particular state? They'll start cleaning, they'll broom the roads, they'll clean it, they'll put the DDT powder to show the prime minister or to show the state government like, yes, this is the thing, this is happening and yes, the changes should be brought. But yes, it's all a dream work, I must say, and fingers crossed for that. Hope things get on well soon. And you have written, uh, you have taken a great strength and dedication to bring a, such a topic in front of the readers. I must say hats off to you. Keep writing, sir, more books like this. So viewers, those who are watching this, those who will watch this later, the books of Rajesh Talwar are available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback format. Please go and grab your copies. So, sir, uh, before we wrap up with the session, quickly we'll have one rap uh, rapid fire round. Okay, thank you. Because after a serious discussion, there should be some <laughs> game session should be there. <clears throat> sure, sure. Yes, so one word which describes author Rajesh Talwar. Uh, innovative, because okay. I like to stretch myself. Uh, I want to do a different thing every time. Uh, so I haven't written a collection of short stories and I haven't written a travel book. Uh, so uh, I think and that would be uh, something I'll, I enjoy doing, trying something new. Or maybe not innovative, but experiment. <laughs> okay, that's really good. So what is, who's your inspiration? Uh, I have many different inspirations, but as a writer, I'm inspired by the intelligence of Oscar Wilde and okay. his plays. That's really nice. Your favorite actress? My favorite actress is yesteryear, Vaidhar Rahman. Oh, 
really good choice <laughs> your favorite food uh my favorite food is indian chinese because not chinese chinese because chinese chinese is terrible uh, <laughs> eaten it in singapore in singapore and in china uh it is completely uneatable as far as indians are concerned but indian chinese uh i just love it and uh, um my my overseas friends also they don't get indian chinese in england and they might get it in the usa but not so easily every time so they, when they come to india they don't forget to have indian chinese yeah a uh, indian touch that what we indians cannot live without <laughs> that's true okay so do you love to type or write your books uh both uh, because uh, many years ago i did the software typing tutor program and then after a week it was in england before that i used to go to a typist but in england i had to type out my own essays and mm. it was very expensive to you know pay people to type so i had to learn and there was a software typing tutor which i learned and after 5 days i was typing very fast and after i think a month i was typing without looking at the keyboard oh and wow that has been yes that's been the situation since then but uh, uh, so i i but i like to print out and make changes uh using a pen so so i i type something on the computer and then i print it out and then i make the changes on the pen with the pen and then that's how you know the writing develops that's awesome really awesome so last question for the rapid fire one punch line by author rajesh talwar okay i'd say uh there's a saying be yourself because everybody is taken i'd say all writers need to be themselves be authentic write about what you know uh and the authenticity will you know come across in your writing uh people will know that you are writing from your heart uh so maybe in two words for any one of the writers there be authentic yes that's totally true so sir it was a lovely time hosting you and connecting with you so we wish you all the very best for all your future projects and the books you are going to write the different genres you are going to bring up waiting for more such sessions in future have a lovely day sir and thank you for joining thank in thank you so much the main it's been lovely uh in fact in a way i'm thinking it's good that our uh instagram session did not work because uh, <laughs> if if it had worked then we won't have been able to engage again yes. and again yes. so uh and instagram i could not have seen you as clearly as i'm now seeing you on a so call uh so plus i think uh, this may make it to youtube and youtube in a certain way has a longer life insta has more more people see it at one go but uh, in youtube it just stays because uh, and so more people can see it even after many years 